Hello, I'm James Wells, Education Manager at Crayola. Planning for back to school can seem like a tedious task, but planning early can help you make the most of your summer and start the new school year off on an exciting note. I love thinking about all the joy that radiates from classrooms when we've done our prep and planning. School is where students dream big and make their plans for the future. As educators, we have a critical role in ensuring that students are future ready. Creativity is an essential skill that prepares them for their challenges they'll face. Today, we'll hear from educators who have the art of back to school planning down to a science. Each of them brings an important perspective to this conversation. I'll start by introducing our educators, Adoria Maxberry and Rosemary Jane, and our friends from TeacherList, Diane Griffin. Helping students become future ready is always top of mind for educators. Future ready schools and classrooms focus on what is essential for student success. While there are many definitions of future ready, the concept is that student-centered learning helps each child reach their potential and goals, whether that includes being prepared for college and or the workforce. Preparing students for the future is more than an academic exercise. It encompasses social and emotional competencies and goal setting. It includes an openness to the uncertainty of what skills and knowledge will be needed for employment when today's kids enter the workforce. Creativity is a major part of future readiness. It is a life skill that fills students with excitement as they are learning, it encourages them to explore possibilities and prepares them to be critical thinkers in their future careers. Rosemary, how do you help students cultivate a future ready mindset from the moment they walk into your classroom? Well, uh, James, thanks for asking me that. I feel that ready for the future now is my goal. It's a mindset. And from the beginning, I try to provide my students with opportunities to have teamwork, collaboration, creativity, and citizenship, personally, as well as digitally. I know that one big piece of future ready is agency. And so students need to have a voice and choice in what they do that helps them be prepared for the future now. Some of the activities that I do within the first week to make sure that happens is I'm a very project-based teacher. And so we start around themes and I do things like the swimmy book and rainbow fish. And we take that deep dive into learning the deep end of the ocean. It ties with our science, but it also has a, a really colorful classroom connection. And it gets us outside of our experience because we are swimming in waters that are unknown. I also try to keep fostering a sense of team, like we have a theme all year long that we swim together. And so those things are tied together in the science curriculum, in my ELA lessons, and as well as what we create. I like my students to do self-portraits at the very beginning of the year. I want them to have a sense of themselves, their identity, and be able to express that. I also teach them early on that we're all authors as soon as we put our pencil to a page. That's something I start with from the beginning. I use the curriculum, a couple of really bright colors and bold representations for themselves as well as what they're learning about. Finally, the organization of my classroom from the beginning. My tools are organized in community sets, and we talk about how to select the right tool, what the purpose is whether we're going to use a metallic thing or a bright color or something dark. And so those are just some ways that I get started at the beginning of the year, keeping my kids future ready. Awesome. Wow. Rosemary, thank you for those wonderful examples. And it's certainly evident that you're not just doing this on the fly. You're preparing, creating a plan, and you're getting ready for these students, not only in your curriculum, but also preparing those students to be future ready. And I love agency, voice, having the metaphors from the book of swimming, comparing that to real life. Now, so according to futureready.org, future ready expectations not only focus on standards-based content, but also integration and support of critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, innovation, and self-direction. Adoria, can you share some examples of how you've used art to help develop future ready skills in students. Being an artist and an art educator, I want to make sure that my students understand how art is integrated into every aspect of their daily lives. So a lot of times I'll have students 
look into how we use arts in various careers, how we use art in our daily lives, and how they can seek themselves in a career using the things that we learned in the classroom. So whether it's explaining how we use math to create a mural and understand how many products we'll need and whether we're using the right amount of materials, we integrate every single subject into all that we do. So that way students understand that the information they're learning both within the art classroom and in their core curriculum classes, which art is a core curriculum class, <laughs> that they're understanding all of those pieces working together to create who they will become and who they're growing into. Wow, love that. Thank you so much, Adoria. And it is certainly important for students to understand that learning doesn't occur in silos, right? When we get into the real world, we are pulling all sorts of knowledge from past and present experiences to create or make whatever it, it is we're charged to make or create. So thank you for that. Thank you for building students' future-ready skills. So now digital technology is also a driving force in preparing students to be future-ready especially when blended with hands-on learning, an approach neuroscientists tell us is critical for deeper learning. Rosemary, as someone who often uses technology and art making in the classroom, what advice do you have for teachers who are eager to integrate both digital technology and hands-on art making? My first piece of advice is to always have something where students can create or represent their thinking and understanding. And so in my classroom, that's called the model station. I do things in small groups and students move around, whether you call them centers or stations or choice menus, there's a model at station. So in their weekly centers, they do models of animals, like specifically, we learn about creature features in our ELA unit and our science unit. And so they'll model the animals. They'll make models of animals, but then they'll also get into specific parts, like the animal's footprint or what the animal's beak looks like. When we did a series on powerful women in Black history, we learned about Mae Jameson and the women who made the Apollo mission possible. And we made models of rockets and capsules. And we've done models of ideas and feelings as well. Like, what does it look like to be frustrated with clay? My advice to get started digitally, just start enhancing what they're already doing and start small and aim big. I really recommend getting started with just QR codes. That's a great way to integrate technology. Students can scan and learn more information or watch a quick video, but then level it up by giving them a place for voice and empowerment by maybe recording their reflections of their learning. I really like a Microsoft Flip for that, but there's tons of applications where your children, very young children, my kids are six when they come to me, can record themselves. And then you can level it up beyond that, start to create some word processing or creating slideshows. And then you can really dive into the deep end and do some AR, VR, or 3D modeling. And I've done a little of that with my first graders as well. You're doing all of this wonderful work with six-year-olds. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. And I love your examples, again, using the opportunity to give student voice to reflect on their learning experience and tying that to a QR code where people can scan maybe at an art show. We're certainly seeing examples of that as parents and the community members are invited into the school building to learn about and see what students are learning. So great examples. And you mentioned VR. So can you talk about that process, that experience that you are bringing with your students or to your students, rather? I actually founded hashtag ARVR for littles. Uh, you can follow that on Twitter. So basically, we just use augmented virtual or mixed reality experiences to deepen our understanding. Currently, there's very little research into it. There's some research going on right now at the University of Oxford, but we are looking at the way that the brain is engaged when we have an augmented or virtual experience. And it does shift the experience. The fact that it's immersive and so drawing you in, I've never had an AR or VR experience where my kids aren't 100% engaged. So whether that's check out from our building or our district from our lending library, a set of VR headsets that we can go into experiences that we're learning about. We can go into art museums. We can go into Africa when we're learning about the boy who harnessed the wind. And we can feel like we're really there. I know when it impacted me the most, I visited India once. Prior to going, I did a VR experience of the spice markets. And when I was there and I was in Mumbai and I was walking through the spice markets, I had a sense of familiarity in a space I'd never been. 
So it does have a power to shift and change our notions of experience. So I do use stuff like that because I do have access to it, but there are free or very inexpensive ways to use augmented reality that works with any smartphone, mobile device. My kids have one-to-one -one iPads, but it could work with a Chromebook. And AR is really powerful. That could just be that I'm learning about a plant's life cycle and I've got an augmented reality version of a plant in front of me. And so I can look at it, manipulate it. I can see the roots under the ground without having to have that physically in the room. Thank you so much for, again, these wonderful examples of how educators can use both digital technology and evergreen hands-on art making together in a classroom experience. So Diane, there is a Crayola lesson plan that educators can access for free on teacherlist.com called Looking at Me in the Future. Adoria will be leading us through the Looking at Me in the Future lesson, but first, Diane, could you tell us how teachers can access this lesson and others on your website? You're gonna go to teacherlist.com and you're gonna go to learn more and select free class and activities. You'll see a variety of activities for different grades and subject matters. Here's the Looking at Me in the Future from Crayola. Each activity will give you a list of materials that you need, as well as instructions on how to run the activity and modifications. It also will tell you about how long it will take. This one's going to be two or three 30-minute periods, and it's great for grades three, four, and five. Thank you, Diane. Adoria, now that educators know how to find this lesson plan, could you please show us how to create a 3D autobiography. Absolutely. I cannot wait to help you create your 3D autobiography, but first we're gonna grab a few materials. We're gonna start off with construction paper. We're going to have both our marker and watercolor pad for our white construction paper. We'll use Crayola washable markers. Here I have the Pip Squeaks, but you can use any washable markers as well as my clicks. Absolutely love these. You're gonna need a recycled small box. So we're actually using a tissue box. And you could even use a small box like a milk carton if you needed to, but I prefer a little bit larger of a box. Crayola glue sticks, your pointed tip scissors, and you'll even be able to use crayons. If you have the colors of the world, Crayola crayons are the colors of kindness crayons. Those actually work really well on a construction paper. So today, we're gonna to be using all of those materials to create our autobiography. Now, the first thing you'll wanna do is make sure that your students are connecting with their story, understanding who they are. And so you'll see my box has a series of stories that tell a little bit about my life. This is a great opportunity to bring in your ELA teacher and to really create a story that captures who your students are, who they'd like to become, and allows them to think about some of the things that they might do, whether they realize they do it or not. So this is also an opportunity to connect with their family members and to ask those questions that, you know, we don't always think about. So where would you like to live? What would you like to be doing in the future? What are your dreams? What are your aspirations? Also understanding what funny stories might you have done when you were young? Like me, I was told by my parents that I needed to go to Hollywood. I had a vivid imagination and I love to explore and pretend. So you'll notice that I had to feature that along with a story about maybe turning my house into a kiln. I think this art teacher life was in my future, but all of these little interviews can become a very powerful tool for reflection. Now, we're going to create our last panel together, and you'll see that it's extremely simple. I wound up pre-measuring all of my construction paper just by tracing the outside of the box. We're going to use our washable glue sticks to glue those to the box. You might find that you can also use liquid glue but the glue sticks tend to keep the paper from wrinkling and adhere to the box just as well. So we're going to use those and you can completely design directly on top of that construction paper, or you can decide to create a little border, which is what we're gonna do today. I'm going to design directly on top of my box for the sake of time, but I'm gonna think about what story I wanna tell. So. I know I've got Rosemary next to me. Can you give me a prompt? One thing that makes me really happy is 
Ooh, write about something, something that, that makes, makes me really happy. happy. I'm most happy when I am creating. And so notice my story can be visual or it can also be written. I think it's best if students integrate both of those things. And then from there, you can have students provide different examples of ways that they create. So I absolutely love to draw. I love to paint. I love, love, love ceramics. And I can also lead into the future. In the future, I will teach globally because I want to impact the world. You can continue to color in. I recommend obviously coloring before you glue it down or if you want to create directly on top of your box, you can do that. That way it encourages the fact that everything is part of the art. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I recommend having our students really present their biographies to their class. Those autobiographies will teach the students more about each other, but also will allow students to learn more about themselves. You have every angle of the box, every side that is literally a canvas for you to create an amazing piece of art. This project would be wonderful for the beginning of year as we determine what are our identities, where do we wanna go, and what are some of the things that we would really like to see. I also recommend having students prepare for their interviews by writing out their questions, getting with their friends and maybe asking them questions. There's so much that can be done with this lesson and it's a fabulous example of how we can learn more about our, ourselves, how we can reflect and respond and create all at the same time. And I just want to add to every year I've done the brown paper bag biography where children bring in an item or two, but like I can totally see how this could connect with what we already do, level it up in an artistic way and maybe pull their box out of their bag. I can imagine seeing a ton of boxes all over. Can you imagine an exhibit where students are able to explain what's on their box, but also even adding a QR code? Oh yeah, one of those slides would have a QR code. Those yeah. interviews to come to life. Mm -hmm. So many things. And then I, I just like too that it's physical, it takes up space, but I could see like put the string through and have them hang down. And then so they can kind of spin and see them. I like this project could be used not only to discuss your identity, but also to look at different ways to explore seasons, different ways to explore maybe the hundredth day of school and what you think you'll look like in a hundred years. It can also describe emotions and describe how you feel. Each of these different panels can be how you're feeling. Or there's so many ways. It could be how the different colors affect your mood. And when I feel happiest, I'm what color? So there are a number of ways that you could make this project your own and go above and beyond to really bring this to life. This is just the start. Can't wait to see what you guys create. I can't either. And I would also say that I would add even dimension on top of this dimension, like maybe um, maybe a tissue flower on one side. There's so much you could do just with the little box. Or maybe even putting things in the box. Yes, in the box. This could be a capsule that you open at the end of the school year if you create it in the beginning of the school year. There's so many ways. We can't wait to see what you come up with. Adoria, thank you so much for this amazing demonstration. And you both, Rosemary, Adoria, provided so many great ways, examples of how you can build and scaffold on this project. Educators, we invite you to share photos of your favorite first day project in the chat. What has worked well with your students during the first days of school? We'll randomly select two winners who share photos of their favorite project to receive a Crayola bundle of supplies valued at $150. Parents and community members can also support your classroom providing supplies to do this lesson and others shared in the chats. Diane, in addition to the free learning resources, TeacherList provides an easy way for teachers to create their classroom supply list and share them out with parents and others. Could you tell us a little about how that works? What we do at TeacherList is we take your old paper or PDF supply list and we digitize them, meaning we put them in a common format that turns them into shoppable lists and allows them to be shared electronically. So how does it work? 
schools will upload their school supply list, whether in a Word doc or a PDF, whatever format you have it in. We'll take those lists and we'll digitize the lists and share them with our national retail partners. We'll also provide a link or an iframe for your school website or social channels so that you can share your list with families. This is all free for the schools and the families. Then the families with just a few clicks can find their lists, select their retailer, and all the items on their supply list will go right into the retailer card online. Super easy, super convenient, and a great way to help the teachers get the materials they need into their classroom. Thanks so much, Diane. Another future ready skill I'd like to talk about is self reflection, which opens a window to our own thoughts as teachers and students consider past experiences and how they could make changes to impact the future. Adoria, what tips and tools would you recommend to other educators who are looking to do more hands on learning experiences that focus on self reflection and creativity, helping to prepare future ready students? Excellent question, James. Self-reflection starts from within, and it's truly important to take a moment to chronicle your ideas, your desires, and the things that you truly want to do. And that often comes from pausing and reflecting. I often have to slow myself down and pause, allowing a moment for mindfulness, both within myself as an educator and within my students, allows us to create more thoughtful pieces. I often remind my students also that process is sometimes more important than our outcome. And we're learning together. We as educators also are still learning. So reminding our student that you're still learning and it's a powerful tool to allow those mistakes to become beautiful moments of learning. is something that I think will help both teachers and students alike create more meaningful art pieces. Adoria, thank you so much. And thank you for the reminder that the reflection piece all starts from within. And yes, the process is certainly more important than the product. Uh, it's through the process that we actually are able to learn. And the product is an indication or a final piece of that learning experience. So now Adoria and Rosemary, building future ready students can't be done in isolation. In fact, collaboration is a future ready skill that we should model for our students. How do you both approach collaborations across the school building? Building a culture of community and collaboration is something that has been woven into the fabric of our school environment. We realize that arts integration is integral to how our students learn and grow. My peers and I collaborate not only within our arts community, but within our district as a community, within our external partners within the arts community. We really make sure that the greater Cincinnati area is involved in the learning of our students. We show our students how to problem solve together on a daily basis. And we model that by problem solving together. This entire year, our school collaborated to make Creativity Week, brought to us by Crayola, a school-wide event. Yeah. It really came to life by sharing the activities and the lessons with families and allowing those open lines of communication to help our students continue that learning at home. So we were able to kind of create a village and demonstrate that that learning is a collaborative process. Mm -hmm. And it really does take all of us to see our students and us win. Another example of our recent collaboration was my students who were writing Cinderella stories and we were putting together a class book. Not only did I sort of run out of a little bit of time to get quality illustrations in our book, I also lacked some of the pointers for them that our teacher can provide, such as line and outlining images to make them pop off the page more fully spreading the color so there's no vacant white space and all of that. Adoria picked that up and I can say that the book that our class produced was better than anything I had imagined and it was just because we worked together on it. Being flexible, so if something from her class needs to spill a little into my time or needs some follow-up, I'm open to, you know, I have this stuff in my plan this week, but I'm also going to add this little video or I'm going to add this reinforcement for what they're doing in art and vice versa. She was flexible when I said, hey, we didn't finish our illustrations, but I think you can make them better. So that flexibility and just talking with one another, I think that's a, exactly. a big piece. And scaffolding. We realize that we're learning items that kind of just mold together yes. very Beautifully. nicely. Beautifully. And I, I realized 
some of the artists that we're exploring in our classroom mm -hmm. are actually being explored within their classroom setting as well. It's in our core curriculum. And so. if we don't talk about those things, share that together. We know that when we do, that we're better together, for sure. I think we do a good job of that building wide, mm -hmm. just reaching out to other teachers and understanding what is happening in your classroom and how can I better support both their learnings in the class that you're teaching as well as in my class. And that collaboration from my standpoint as a, as a gen ed teacher, I have similar project connections with the technology teacher, with mm -hmm. the music teacher, with the reading specialist. We do truly have to work together because life is an integrated project, right? Life mm -hmm. is all the things coming together. And so I want everything that my students do to be as interdisciplinary and cross-curricular and just experiential as possible. If they see us working collaboratively, they better understand how they can do the same thing with their peers and with teachers alike to make sure that they learn and have the best experience that yeah. they can have. Gosh, you gave so many great examples and I'm hearing these things. It's important to communicate, right? Which we know is a future ready skill. And of course, collaboration, you are experts at doing this. And I love how you've mentioned scaffolding, building on the experience from other classrooms that students may have transitioned from and going to. Thank you so much. Being open and flexible, like these are such great examples, great advice for any teacher that's looking to build this school-wide collaborative community. And I would say the most important of all that you've mentioned is model it. Yes, we have to model it for our students so that they can, in fact, be future ready. Thank you, panelists, for sharing your expertise with us today. And a special thanks to you, our viewing audience, for joining us. Mahatma Gandhi reminds us that the future depends on what you do today. We hope that this has helped you get started. Have a great summer. Bye. Bye. Have a have great, great summer. summer. Bye. Have a great summer. Bye-bye.